Hi, I'm Mary Colbert. Welcome to Divine Health Podcast. And I'm here with my husband, Dr. Don Colbert. Hey there. We are excited as usual. This is our podcast number two on the leaky gut. We're talking about Don's book. Well, on the gut zone, actually. Uh, Yeah, the gut zone. (laughs) But you're going to, if you don't have his book, The Gut Zone, you need to get the book because it's so full of a lot more information than we're able to cover on the podcast. But this is vital information to your health. I'm telling you, this is life changing to a lot of people. You know, Don, during the break, we were talking with the producer of the podcast and it was interesting because she just mentioned to us, she says, you know, Dr. Colbert, why is it? Every doctor doesn't know this. Why don't they know all this? And Real simple. Okay. Doctors are mainly taught by the pharmaceutical industry. And so doctors are taught and programmed and indoctrinated to prescribe meds. And again, you look at meds, and many times the fourth leading cause of death in this country is adverse reactions to meds causing death. So I try and minimize the meds, and if I do prescribe a med, it's usually a bioidentical hormone that the body's not producing adequate amounts of, or an innocuous medicine called nystatin that kills overgrowth of yeast in the intestinal tract, usually triggered by excessive antibiotics. So I rarely use these meds because I found I simply need to let your food be your medicine. I take away the foods that create inflammation and disease in your body, and I give you the healing foods that start to restore your gut and restore your body. It's real simple. You know, one of my favorite phrases that you have said through the years, and I've heard you say this at seminars that we've spoken at at churches and through the years, but one of it stuck with me is you catch a cold, you catch the flu, but you develop disease. by consistently making the wrong choices in the foods you eat. Now, I want people to really chew on that thought right there. So many people are under the belief, my mom had it, my family had it, this is genetics, we are inherited to have type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, heart disease, whatever. And so what's happened is this belief has so perpetuated around the world in people's minds that the enemy has got this as a stronghold in people, this belief. It's a real stronghold that's in people's mind that mommy had it, daddy had it, this is genetics, I can't, you know, I'll get it. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. (laughs) Well, it's a partial lie because I like a lie. A partial lie is a lie. (laughs) For decades that genetics loads the gun but environment or your food choices and what you choose to do pulls the trigger. And again, that's simply the key is we are consistently making the wrong food choices and literally inviting disease into our bodies, initially into our GI tracts, which is the foundation of health, is a healthy GI tract. So what we, in effect, are doing is we're liter- we, have an inherit- many- we have inherited some genes, yes, that could predispose us to disease. But the main thing we, that happens is we start to literally have a habitual, uh, we develop a habit of choosing the wrong foods that develop disease. So, for example, I was born in Mississippi, and my parents would feed me a lot. We'd have a dessert after every meal. Well, I didn't like sugar. They'd, feed, they'd put saturated fats in everything. Bacon grease went in the beans and went in... Uh, every kind of food we would eat to spice them up and make them more palatable. Well, I didn't like saturated fats. My, my, my dad, when he'd cook a steak, he'd say, now clean your plate, eat all the fat off that steak. Well, I hated that saturated fat, all that gristle. He said, eat it. And I would just almost puke from eating that. But what happened is he tried to teach me to eat like he ate, which I refused because something inside me was telling me no. Well, the same thing happens with a lot of people from Texas. We have a house in Texas, and we we go out and eat at some of the restaurants, but we see a lot of Mexican restaurants. These people eat a lot of corn. Well, it just so happens we fatten our cattle and our pigs up with corn. That's what fattens these animals up the most is corn. And that's why type 2 diabetes in the Hispanic community is rampant. And bread. They eat a ton of bread, and they eat a ton of rice. 
All this is what I refer to as carbage or excessive carbs, especially highly processed, is like garbage to your body. It breaks down into sugar. Sugar increases insulin. Insulin tells your body to store fat, and you're doing exactly what your body's designed to do. You're storing fat, which is inviting all disease into your body. Type 2 diabetes, obesity, dementia, heart disease, leaky gut, and all these other problems, you're signing up for it. So I think if people will have a shift in their mind right now, to believe that they can take control of their health. They can do something to make themselves healthier and in better health, that it is not out of their control. I really think people have to have a a shift in their mind and a belief in their mind that they can improve their health. They really can. And it doesn't have to be through medicine or a drug that God has an answer for every disease, no matter what you're battling, no matter what you're going on. I don't care. God can improve your health by some of the principles and the things that Don is trying to bring to you. You've got to begin somewhere. Start somewhere, even if it's baby steps. Begin somewhere, little by little, line upon line. You add to knowledge of what you're doing. But I think just the beginning of acknowledging that you are going to take responsibility for your health. You're going to own it. You're going to own that responsibility. You're going to say, I'm going to own the fact that this is going on in my body because I make wrong choices and not blame it on anything else. Own it, change it, and watch God do an amazing work through your body. Absolutely right. And we're talking about the gut zone because I call the gut the foundation of health. If you were to come to me as a patient, the first thing I do to most every patient is I heal their gut. Now, a lot of people, I shouldn't say a lot, some people, their gut's healthy because they haven't had all the antibiotics or medicines that damage the gut. And they're not eating all the the inflammatory foods that damage the gut, like gluten, which is one of the worst. But what we're talking about, the root of most every gut disease And most every systemic disease is a condition called leaky gut. That doesn't mean you need depends and you're you're soiling your undergarments. No, it means that you are developing little microscopic holes, not a hundred or so. I'm talking about millions of these in the small intestines. And what happens, these cells that line our small intestines are only one cell thick. And they're finger-like projections called villi. And in between the villi is a tight junction. And it's supposed to be tight because we're not supposed to let that open up or else undigested or partially digested food will start to enter into our bloodstream and create all kinds of inflammation, liver toxicity, and lead eventually to a uh, you know, leaky brain and cause memory loss and problems like that. But it also starts real important with a proper digestion, proper chewing. So many people do not chew their food well. This is one of the key things I see in probably 90 to 95% of my patients or more is I ask them, how many times do they chew every bite? Now think of that. How many times do you chew your food? You're supposed to ideally chew every bite 30 times. 30. Can you imagine 30 times? You say, wait, it'd take me an hour to eat my meal. Well, that's what it's supposed to so that you can literally digest your food good, so that you can break it down, uh, digest it, and absorb it good. But most people, now, I've had to come down. That was back 30 years ago. I'd tell my patients, chew every bite 30 times, set your fork down between every bite, and chew your food and carry on pleasant conversation that's important <laughs> Not, don't exactly. argue while you're eating don't correct the children talk about their homework what they didn't do folks that create stress in the gut exactly. with children do not do that while you're eating make the conversation pleasant no fighting no bickering no while news you're turn eating. the news off yes, it's mostly important. bad news exactly yes. make it pleasant conversation turn because, on music right there you go because what's happening When we digest our food, we need to be chewing each bite. Don't be washing it down with soda or tea or even water, but try and chew every bite, I say, 20 times. I'm happy with 20. Now, some people only chew it once or twice and then swallow it. For those, I'll take 10. Give me just 10 chews. But what's happening, our body is fearfully and wonderfully made. When you relax, the most amazing thing happens. Our body shifts 
from generally a sympathetic dominant state of our autonomic nervous system. So you see, we have this autonomic nervous system that affects our gut especially. And it has two branches, sympathetic branch, which enables our, it pumps when our sympathetic nervous system is stimulated, it constricts our blood vessels and pumps blood away from our gut and pumps the blood to our muscles, to our heart, to our lungs, so that we can fight or flee. Now, what happens when we're in the parasympathetic state is called the relaxation state. There's a shift that occurs, and the, the blood is shunted away from the muscles. And uh, still, we have blood to the heart, so don't worry, your heart's fine. But the blood is shunted away from the muscles, and it's shunted to the gut so that our pancreas is able to produce those wonderful enzymes that help us digest our food, so that our stomach is able to produce hydrochloric acid that helps to break down these proteins so that you're understanding what's happening. So the most amazing thing happens is when we're in a state of peace, just imagine Jesus at the Last Supper. Here's John, the apostle, well, he was a disciple John back then. He was laying on Jesus' breast, breast talking to him, and just asking, now, who is it that's going to betray you? And Jesus said, it's the one that I dipped the sop of bread in and hand to him. That was Judas, remember? Well, here they were. They were just lounging about, now, not lounge lizards, but lounging about, relaxing, laughing, telling stories about, hey, can you believe that miracle? Can you believe that blind man, blind from birth, who's seen now? I could imagine them talking, laughing, enjoying life, telling the stories of the miracles that happen. And those digestive juices are being released. They're chewing every bite 30 times. And Jesus is, is just there. They have the peace of God that passes all understanding you with know, them. For the people here in the U.S., if you've never traveled overseas, it's hard for you to imagine this and picture it because culturally it is so different here compared to over there. When they have their meals and they have time, you know, an hour, two hours is nothing. I mean, they they take their time. They enjoy. The oh yeah, food. tell when we were in Greece, Crete, Mary. That God, was amazing. It, it, it just, I love going to Greece. Greece is one of my favorite places to go. I love, love, love Greece. That's our friend Effie. And, that's yeah, from and, Crete. And the food there is just insane. I mean, it's so fresh. And fresh it's so good. veggies, fresh fruit, fresh. Olive oil, literally from the vineyards Nothing around Nothing processed. Us. Everything, the vineyards, they go to the market oil, every day to get fresh. They have their mar little markets everywhere, and people are going there every day. Their refrigerators are real tiny because they don't keep it and store it. From they, they go and get it every day in the fresh market. And it's just a whole different shift of how they look at uh, mealtime. Mealtime is a pleasant time, a fun time. Here, we've got our drive through get it to me quick, get it by us. I'm, I'm going to eat while I drive. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. And because we, ha our plates are so full and we're so busy and we're running kids to pick them up here and drop them off there. And just our, our schedules are just nuts, nuts. But and I just I don't know what we can do about that because I that would be well. Here's a what big we have change. to do: we have to learn to get in God's rhythm. Most Christians are not in God's rhythm, and again, uh, Jesus says, "Come unto me, all you that are that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, not stress." He says, "Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest under your soul. For my yoke is." easy it's easy and my burden is light in other words cast all your cares on me just relax get in my rhythm and one thing i found is jesus never got in a hurry never and i used to say hurry mary hurry i know and the lord convicted me and said quit and uh, literally quit saying hurry don't hurry her up i want I she's entering into my rest don't be putting her into your stress <laughs> put i want her in my rest yeah he's walking 50 <laughs> yards ahead of me the, turning over his shoulder going come on mary hurry hurry <laughs> hurry you know i mean if anybody who has seen us out and about will see you know mary's 50 yards behind don she's Where the tortoise at? i'm the hare i've had to, i've had to get back in god's rhythm <laughs> and i've had to be awakened and slapped in the face by the holy spirit and say no slow down get my rhythm and then as a result my goodness that's part of my gut problem yeah. i had too much stress i was made i was not making that shift and I was living in the sympathetic nervous system where all that blood was shunted away from my gut 
shunted to my muscles, shunted to my heart to fight or flee, and I was literally stewing in my own stress juices, and as a result, I fought irritable bowel for decades. Listen, I want you to turn off the news, folks. Just yes. Just turn Amen. it off. Go on a fast on. from the news. You need to shift to enjoying life. Life is too short, folks. It's a little dash on the tombstone. Little bitty tiny dash That's right. from birth to death. Now, that we have a Divine Health a Gut Zone package. I want to encourage you, those that are listening, if you don't have it and you haven't started, you become a partner with Divine Health, our ministry, in helping us take this information around the world to the body of Christ. You become a partner when you get Divine the a Gut Zone package. Now, the Gut Zone package is the collagen, the fiber, the book, and the Beyond Biotics. Well, I think you have to request the book separate, I think. The you can get pack. the package you with can. the book. Okay. Yes, All right. yes I didn't you know can that. do that. I learned you can new. get the book with the package. And if you've already got the book, then you can get the other package. But this is the starter package that you want to get to get on to begin to heal your gut. Now, these are materials that is a foundation materials to begin to restore and heal your gut that you need. All three of these products, the collagen, the fiber, and the Beyond Biotics. This is critical. Now, you can't just go get any collagen. It won't work. It's Don's collagen that he is. I'm not just saying this. It's his combination collagen. You can't get anything like it anywhere in the stores. So forget that. Our fiber, yeah, you can do other fibers, absolutely. But nothing tastes as good as ours. And I don't know about you, but life is too short. And I want to enjoy. If I'm going to do something, I want to enjoy. It's got to taste good. But and also, let me just good. tell them this about the fiber. Okay. Again, I tried Mary on psyllium husk powder back years ago. And she hated it. She says, this tastes like tree bark. And then she'd let it sit. So you have to put it in cold water or else it'll form like oatmeal within a few minutes. I'm not going to do it if it's And so you can, Mary said, forget it. I would rather go without. And so then finally, I had my food scientist. He came up with the most amazing berry flavor. amazing. That has prebiotics in it. And she stirs it up in cold water and she loves it. I do it every night. And it has to pass Mary's taste test. Now, my taste buds, she says, are dead. They aren't dead. But I can take anything as long as I know it's good for me. But and Mary, I have to tell you, it completely revitalizes. If I can go to the toilet for just a minute, okay. bear with me. She always, her mind the, goes yeah, to the no, toilet. The morning <laughs> after, you know, the next morning you get up. And I have to tell you, I was like back in my teenage years of uh, the bowel movement. Oh, you're I talking about believe, the snakes? Yeah, no, no. And I the sausages? Well, no. it, it was, um, <laughs> okay. it just cleans you up, folks. It, it does. does. <laughs> and, it, and it's a good thing. It's a good thing. You feel like all those toxins and everything that's trying to hold on inside your intestines, this fiber pulls it and pushes it out. Mary, I got to tell you one story that's so funny. I had a patient that came in recently, Mm -hmm. and they say, thank you, Dr. Cobra, for your fiber and your probiotics Mm -hmm. and your collagen. They said, Mm -hmm. this is amazing. I used to go through a huge roll of toilet paper every month. They said, my toilet paper bill is literally cut in quarters. They say, sometimes, literally, I don't have to wipe. I know. And they said, and I said, that's how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be like a bear. We're supposed to be like a bear. They have a bowel movement. It comes out normally. Nothing sticks to you. I can tell when (laughs) someone comes visits us if there's a whole bunch of toilet paper missing. That's right. I'm thinking, uh oh. Mary gives them a little. They need our fiber, you know. Mary gives them a little gift, gives them our fiber zone. (laughs) Okay, here, here, you can just have my fiber zone. Well, it's used. Well, that's okay. We'll send you a new one. I know. I, I know this is a little bit too much for some listeners, but I got to tell you, hey, this is real life. It's, we're all, you know, we all go to the bathroom, right? So it's it's part of life and you just want, and this is amazing. Our fiber is amazing. And then beyond biotics. Now you can't just get any biotics. Our biotics. You know, bio, this is a probiotic, which is, means beneficial bacteria. Okay. But these are what I call this. It's like the Navy SEALs of the probiotics. It is. Because these little bacteria, beneficial bacteria, plant in the gut. And then we fertilize them with our fiber zone. And all of a sudden, instead of just a few probiotics, all of a sudden, instead of the recon team, we have a full battalion of these Green Beret or Navy SEALs in our guts, healing our gut fighting off microbes and just healing our bodies. So it's amazing. So a, a sacrificing ice cream or maybe a Starbucks latte or maybe your potato chips and all this other stuff that you go and buy, you buy this instead per month 
and watch the difference in how you feel and watch the difference that you spend garbage money for garbage in your body. Take that money, put it toward health and watch your body heal. Folks, it's a mind shift. You've got to just shift in your thinking. You have to invest in your health on a monthly basis in order to restore it. So just make that commitment. And then at some point, you just won't even need health insurance, I believe. You'll be free. You know, you're going to save yourself a lot of money. Absolutely, because again, our health, literally the key area of the body that is, is the key to restoring your health is the gut. When you heal the gut, usually the whole body starts to heal. It's that powerful. But let's talk about in my book, The Gut Zone, I talk about the seven key causes of leaky gut. And so I want to talk about the number one cause I see in my practice pretty much every day. And the number one cause is antibiotics. We consume way too many antibiotics. But you say, but I had a real bad infection. I had a strep throat or I had, you know, maybe a and pneumonia. And there is a time yes, you need absolutely. antibiotics. There's but a time you need Now, it. listen, after taking antibiotics, it's critically important to start to heal the gut and start to replace those probiotics that were killed. A lot of people are taking these super antibiotics that are broad spectrum, that's like dropping a nuclear bomb on uh, a small battalion army when all you need some just, you know, maybe some, uh, you know, Air Force go in and drop a few minor bombs instead of a nuclear bomb. Well, that's what antibiotics do. They literally nuke our microbiome. They destroy a lot of the powerful probiotics that give us health. And so antibiotics are probably the number one cause of leaky gut and intestinal problems I see. And I'm going to tell my story in just a minute. But let me just list these real quick. NSAIDs are probably number two. NSAIDs are aspirin, ibuprofen, naproxen, Celebrex or Mobic or any of these aspirin or anti-inflammatory type medications. They literally worsen leaky gut at warp speed. They don't create just microscopic holes. They create big holes and can cause ulcers. Another is real common, and it's another medicine. Now, these are all caused by prescription meds, and this is what I was taught for years. I was taught by the pharmaceutical industry to prescribe these, and we overprescribe. But uh, the third common medicine that causes is a key cause of leaky gut are proton pump inhibitors and acid blocking meds. Now, when you turn off or turn down the acid in the gut, you have just opened the door. See, acid is our greatest protector against bad bacteria in our gut, viruses, H. pylori, parasites, because that acid is the first line of defense that kills bad bugs. Uh, parasites, bacteria, viruses. And when you don't have enough acid, guess what starts to happen in your small intestine? You start to grow excessive amounts of bad bacteria. And then all of a sudden you get a condition we're going to talk about later called SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth in your small intestines. You are not supposed to have bacteria in your small intestines or else we're going to have bloating and gas and discomfort you're going to blow up like someone hooked you up to an air hose and i'll talk about that later because it's part is usually associated with ibs so also the acid is critically important for your body to absorb amino acids when people over 70 do not have enough acid they start to get muscle wasting you look at their arms and that skin just sags from their arms because their muscles have waste. You look at their thighs, they have no muscle. If you look at their butt, their butt's sagging. There's no muscle left because acid is critical for absorbing these amino acids and to make protein. So you get a condition we call sarcopenia, which means muscle wasting, which is associated with feebleness and frailty, especially in those over 70, but especially in 80. I see it. It's epidemic. So those people usually need digestive enzymes and and or hydrochloric acid. But also, if you don't have enough acid, guess what you're not getting, women? Real important for you. You're not absorbing your calcium and your magnesium and your B12. So you start getting bone loss, osteopenia, osteoporosis. And do your doctors and what happens? They keep you on your acid-blocking med, and it gets worse and worse. So they add a medicine, a bisphosphonate. That can cause acid reflux. It can cause loss of your teeth. It can cause all of these other problems, even more fractures. So it's just medicine on top of medicine. So 
again, that's why, and also, if you're on these acid-blocking meds, you start to get tired. Why? Because you're less likely to absorb vitamin B12. That's our energy vitamin. So you see how it happens, and these are just medicines. So we're talking about the key triggers of leaky gut. Now, Don, it's amazing because I'm listening to you, and I'm thinking, you know what? We have to age, but we don't have to grow old. And that's what you're talking about. Right, exactly. Is your body doesn't have to really get old. Absolutely right. And there's right. things that you can do to keep your body revitalized and youthful even though you age. Now, yes, when you're taking these acid-blocking meds, generally speaking, you are aging at warp speed. Yeah. And so that's why I teach you. I talk about the nine key gut diseases and how to reverse them. And one is acid reflux. I reverse it every day. It's I so know, easy. Know, it's so simple. And without it. meds, I don't use those meds. But we're talking about the seven keys. Let's just go through these real quick. GMO foods. Oh, my goodness. We are here in America. Bombarded. We eat so many GMO genetically modified foods. These genetically modified foods are mainly present in Soy, or 90, over 90% 90 of soy is genetically modified. Most Forget people say... soy. Throw that out of your diet. And soy causes high estrogen, men. You don't want high estrogen. It attacks the thyroid. It also affects the thyroid. Absolutely right. But listen to this. Canola oil, over 95% of canola oil is genetically modified. Soybean oil is the most commonly consumed oil in America. It's highly <laughs> inflammatory. It angers me to hear that. And <laughs> canola oil is real common. And you'll find either soybean oil or canola oil in most salad dressings and in most mayonnaise. That's why I take my own olive oil with me when I go out to eat. He does. He literally does. I know. He, I takes, just, I he know. takes a bottle of olive oil. Our, we, we have our own <laughs> olive oil we've imported from Greece. And so he has it in a little bottle stuck in my purse. You but, know. We, but due to COVID, we ran out. So we're trying to get back over to yeah. Greece and get B -Y -O -B it going again. B-Y-O-B is yeah, bring we, your own olive oil. <laughs> and people, when I walk in there, I used to, I just carry my own bottle in. Yeah. And I got tired of people saying, oh, we can bring our own wine in here. I said, no, that's my olive oil. <laughs> and so now I just put it in a bag. I put it in a shopping bag. Like. It was so funny. We had this one couple that come over, and I said, we saw Dr. and Mary Colbert come into the restaurant. Mary and we were looking at you, and we go, oh, wow, they drink wine. We didn't know they drank wine because we saw this bottle in your purse. And I said, no, that was our olive oil. That was not wine. <laughs> I know, and we'll talk about olive oil because what's so important about olive oil is this special polyphenol or phenolic compound. I know I'm getting ahead of myself. You say all these rabbit trails. It's oleocanthal. Yeah. Oleocanthal is the most powerful phenolic compound on the planet. And you can get that on our website, drcolbert.com. We sell it. And you say, why is it so important? Well, first of all, it's uh, the amazing products of this. It's one of the most powerful polyphenol. It is the most powerful polyphenol phenolic compound which has cardiovascular protection. It has brain protection. Studies in rats and mice are showing it actually starts to eat up that beta amyloid that's associated with Alzheimer's disease. Now, we're not making any claims, but this, that's rat studies. And also what they're finding is oleocanthal in rat studies is starting to cause can some cancer cells of certain varieties to undergo apoptosis or programmed cell death. So the research on this is amazing. Now, again, that's on oleocanthal, but that's what's in really good olive oils. And so you can get olive oils that are high phenolic or high oleocanthals, generally from Greece. And the way you know it's high in oleocanthal, generally, it'll be a burn in the back of the throat. You'll feel a burn, and then you'll have a little hacky cough for just a second or two. And if you have that, you can pretty much be assured that has some oleocanthals. Now, it may not have a lot, but it'll have some. So that's what I always look for in an olive oil, a real good quality, is you need that and burn. And Paul Newman's, you can get in Walmart. I like to let, get people right, an alternative. It's sure. inexpensive, and it's affordable, and it's accessible. Right. You can go there and get Paul Newman's olive oil, and it's got the hot, that oleocanthal. It has it. some. It has. Now, genetically modified foods also include corn. 92% of corn's genetically modified. Well, genetically modified foods generally hurt your gut and trigger leaky gut. Also, soy. 94% of soy is genetically modified. Sugar beets. That's how we get a lot of our sugar. 99.9% .9 is genetically modified. 
So, and then cotton, used to make cottonseed oil. A lot of our potato chips are fried in cottonseed oil, which is highly inflammatory, genetically modified, starts to trigger leaky gut. 94% cottonseed oil, genetically modified. Wow. So, uh, also, other foods that uh, trigger leaky gut include chlorine in drinking water. If you have a chlorine taste in your drinking water, don't drink it. Chlorine mm. kills your good bacteria. As well as pesticides. That's tap water, folks. That's tap exactly. water. Exactly. That's why I drink do filter. Do not drink. You can cook with it, but do not. No, don't cook with it don't either. Even cook don't with even it. cook with that. Uh-oh. I don't cook with that water. You better no. not be cooking with it. I'm not. I'm Please not. don't. I, Please I, tell I, me you're not. I'm okay. not. <laughs> I'm not. I always put the bottled water in Good, there. good, good. But, but you don't want to drink it. That's for sure. Right. Absolutely right. Now, also pesticides. People are saying, I don't eat pesticides. You realize every time... You get strawberries that are not organic at the grocery store. Strawberries and spinach, two real healthy foods, have the highest amount of pesticides according to the Environmental Working Group. So you're saying, I'm eating a spinach salad. Well, you're getting pesticides. Unless it's organic. And those pesticides are killing off your good bacteria and helping to trigger leaky gut. And kale. Kale is one of the healthiest foods on the planet. But kale that's not organic is full of pesticides. That's the number three. And then apples are number five highest food and pesticides. So see there, we're doing this thinking we're getting something healthy and we're literally damaging our gut. And the last one, the thing that triggers leaky gut are intestinal infections. Like when I went to Mexico years ago, I got Montezuma's Revenge, which is enterotoxigenic E. coli, and it caused leaky gut back then when I was in high school. But what happened, what caused the worst leaky gut I ever had was when I was first in practice. When I was in practice, I was solo practitioner in 1987, and I didn't have time to get sick. So when I would get a sinus infection or something like that, and I'd get one because I'd be, I was on call every night. And people, your immune system was so run down. You oh weren't getting goodness. rest, exactly. Asleep, the beepers going off all, all the night, time. All night, all night. I remember. And it was just crazy. And I, looking back, I was way out of God's rhythm. But I didn't have time to be sick. So when I got a sinus infection, I'd blow my nose. It'd be yellow or something, and I'd be having tenderness over my And s- you had sinuses. samples of antibiotics from the pharmacy. Oh, I had your three office, huge like tons, cabinets full. So. so I'd grab some Augmentin, yep. and I'd take it for about a week, and boom, I was great. I didn't miss a day of work for years. But what happened, I started getting IBS symptoms. I started getting uh, some diarrhea, some cramping pains. I would get abdominal bloating and gas, and then all of a sudden I started having to run to the bathroom. I never had that before, and so I just said, oh, this is my new normal, so I didn't know to take what I needed to take for it, so I just, you know, continued eating what I was eating, which was the foods that fueled it, and we're going to talk about IBS in the next segment, but I'll mention a little bit. The main foods that fuel IBS, which everyone should know, is number one, dairy. Mo, a lot of my IBS sufferers are very sensitive to dairy. They got to lay the dairy on the altar, especially anything with lactose. That's milk. That's milk sugar, as well as fructose. Just think of oats. Fructose is fruit sugar. So, high sugar fruits like fruit juice, oranges, bananas, they're going to cause IBS symptoms to get worse, as well as fiber. Fiber, many times, initially, unless you start with little teeny amounts with the probiotics and with the collagen, will make it worse, as well as any excessive sugars will make it worse. And one of the worst things are these artificial sweeteners, especially the sweet alcohols, such as your uh, xylitol and malitol and all of these. They ferment in the gut, and they create tremendous irritable bowel symptoms. So I had irritable bowel. And I didn't address it. I let it go on, which the root cause is really leaky gut and food sensitivities. And so then in around 1989 or 199, I don't remember which, but one morning I awakened with this horrible rash all over my arms, all over my legs, all over the back of my hands. And I had the most severe itching and red inflamed rash. So I thought I'd contracted scabies, but I didn't. I try. I took the scabies cure. It didn't help it. So, and you know, Don, that was a paradigm shift with you in medicine because at that point, after you went to your buddy and he said, "Hey, you've got," right, I went to one of the leading dermatologists. Yeah, right. yeah, and he told you what you had. You really thought this is crazy. I don't have anything in my family like this, and so 
I remember you coming home and going, Mary, this doesn't make sense. This just doesn't make sense. He goes, I don't have any history of this. He goes, but he said, you have the heart, you have the heartbreak of psoriasis. That's right. The thing that stuck with me is not Jerry's story to you. The thing that stuck with me was I remember watching your face like, this is not right. Something is wrong, Mary. This is, is, the answer is not meds. It's not a medicine. That's not the answer. And, you know, they basically wanted to just treat the symptoms. Right. And you were like, no. No, and that was, believe it or not, that was the thing that God used right. in your life right, to throw you out of the boat, so to speak, to make you walk on water. Exactly and right. And he literally used that to catapult you into a whole nother world. And I remember you going to a seminar that you heard about this lady that was helping people with your condition naturally. And you thought, no way, no way. And we went all the way to California. And I remember you coming out of this going, your head was exploding. You heard things and saw things you never heard, you never saw. And he was like, Mary, this is a whole nother world. This is a whole nother world of thinking on how to heal. Find the thorn and remove it and the body will heal. Don, I'm so thankful you walked through this. Absolutely. I'm so, I'm I hated so thankful. It. I hated it, but I'm glad I got through it. I think it stuck in it. It did. It threw you into a whole nother world. And what it did is it showed you that God has a real answer for every disease, and that he does. But let me tell you what I did. Can I tell them what I did? What I did is I figured out the foods that I craved and ate every day, which was gluten or wheat. I eat wheat at every meal. And I said, oh, I, you know, Jesus taught us to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. And also, I love salsa. I loved peppers and tomatoes and that's not bad stuff but right. for you for me it was highly inflammatory right. and real simple when i simply eliminated three key foods gluten tomatoes and peppers and then i gave my gut what it needed which was probiotics lots of probiotics this was real early when no one was taking probiotics yeah y'all gotta remember this this was 30, early early like 30 years ago it's like 1990 91 something yeah like that. i mean nobody was talking like this nobody did any of, of this it was this was a complete new world now he told me the dermatologist who's the top dermatologist in central florida he says you'll have this for the rest of your life yeah, and, and i said you were and like, i was no. freaking out because i said wait no one in my family has this right. i'm the only one but then within three months of changing my diet, taking a probiotic, and literally just making that shift, psoriasis was gone. I remember you coming home and going, nightshades. What is nightshades? Right. He goes, this is, this is a whole other way of looking at food. He goes, Mary, these nightshades are inflaming me. That's what's causing this. Well, I talk all about yeah. them in the Gut Zone book because that was my thorn. That was. And when I removed that thorn... And put in just a, some key probiotics, my gut healed. And I didn't even have near the information I have now. I just had a little smidgen, but my gut still healed. Now, I still had some IBS I'll talk about later. And took the next me a, one. Right. It took me a while longer to clear the IBS. But. Be sure and share this podcast with your friends and your family. Don't just listen to it. Share it. Direct them to this podcast. And then go to our website, drcolbert.com. You need to get a hold of our Gut Zone package and begin your healing. I'm so excited for you that are listening. I really believe that you begin to implement these things in your body. We're going to hear from you. You can can write us you can call us and if there's questions and topics that you're wanting to hear from dr colbert in the future feel free to call our office and talk to our girls up front and tell them say hey have him cover this in the future and we'll be happy to do that and so today we want to thank you for listening to dr colbert's podcast god bless you god and, bless you until next time and, we'll see you amen and just remember the lord wishes above all things all things all things all things that you be in health even as your soul prospers god wants to restore your health i believe that 100 percent. amen